So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this exciting masterclass. Present your portfolio like a pro, because we're doing it in collaboration with Savannah College of Art and Design, popularly known as CAD. And today we have with us Ms. Kushnam Mirza. Thank you so much, Kushnam, again for joining. So uh, let me tell you a little bit of Kush, a little bit about Kushnam. So she's an experienced designer and illustrator. Uh, with a demonstrated history of working in the graphic and the illustration industry. She's skilled in Adobe, Creative Cloud graphics, motion graphics, and model making. So interestingly, Kushnam is also an alumna of SCAD, and she has studied MFA, uh, focused in illustrations and concept designing. Currently, she is working as the Associate Director uh, at SCAD, Associate Director of Admission at SCAD, and Kushnam, of course, as always, we're really, really happy to have you here and uh, looking forward to this session. So guys, uh, if you have any questions, of course, Kushnam is going to spare last 15 minutes to address all your question and answers. So you can keep it, keep putting it in the uh, question and answer box and she'll address it in the end. Thank you. Kushnam, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's always really funny when I hear all my resume points uh, being posted out. But um, it is true that I had a creative bone in my body and I definitely want and encourage students to pursue their um, expectations and fields for creative careers. And it is wonderful. It is one of the fast pacing, growing industries of today's world in terms of design and technology and business innovation. So I'm excited to see that so many of you have this interest or are leaning towards pursuing creative careers. And with that being said, what I'll do is we'll start our presentation because we don't wanna lose on time. But um, as Mithali definitely spoke about, uh, we are from Savannah College of Art and Design and we're popularly known as the University for Creative Careers. And I do emphasize that word careers a lot because it's not just about honing skills to pursue an education, but it is to pursue a proper job or an employment or to make your mark in the industry. And that is what we cater or hone skills here at SCAD. And today, especially because we get a lot of interests, a lot of students asking this question about how do I portray my work or present my portfolio for an admission decision? Or how do I even apply or figure out the structure of my portfolio? We're here to help you with some tips and guidelines that may benefit you to build that excellent or GOAT portfolio as we call it. And this is something that is a never ending struggle so I'm not here to tell you what's good or what's bad because art and design are very subjective in terms of projects. It is very user centric, but I'm here to encourage and tell you what are the few tips and tools that you can cater to or listen to, to manage your portfolio becoming the greatest. So with that being said, we'll start with the basic understanding of what is a portfolio. And to me and to a lot other colleagues of mine from universities and from SCAD, for us, when we talk about portfolios, it is a collection of your work, whether it is paintings, whether it's music, film, sculpture, or any other art form, your portfolio gives you that opportunity to show off your artistic skills, to explore your experiences and even display your interest to a reviewer or to a user. When we talk about portfolios in the design industry, we always talk about the representation of you and your work as a creative professional. It is very difficult to find your skill or to find your very niche style of a design, but that takes years and that starts with building a portfolio. So when you're creating or compiling your projects, it means that you have to include your very best work. It has to be showcased in a professional manner, meaning if you have photographs, if you have uh, images that you're portraying in your portfolio or on your website, a simple factor like blurry images or shadows would not be appreciated. So it's that wow factor that you bring through your work and your display of projects 
And that's what sets your portfolio apart from any other student. Um, in the interest of today's presentation, we got a lot of students asking us this question about what's the kind of portfolios or the type of projects that students are looking forward to to submit for an undergraduate degree, that is the bachelor's degree program here in the United States. So when it comes to the undergraduate steps or guidelines, most universities will allow you to, you know, put up projects that are varied from the genres of visual arts, photography, written material, which is essay writing, script writing, storyboarding, and so on. Even performing artwork is accepted for a lot of institutions, which would be more towards your film, theater, and dance performances. And there are a few universities that offer 3D sculpture and renders as they do offer those particular programs. Now, very few universities also have equestrian studies. And if this is a new word ringing out to you, don't worry, I was the same when I heard about it. And it's all about horse riding skills. It's all about your performance in the arena of equestrian. So if you do find universities that offer this program, then just know that can be a part of your portfolio presentation. So when it comes to the undergraduate degree portfolio, and again, I'm gonna stress this over and over in my presentation, every university will have separate guidelines that they cater to. So that will take about a few minutes of research on your part to understand what are their expectations. Certain universities in the US prefer having a more open generic portfolio. Some universities may request you to have specific skill sets for the degree program you intend to apply for. So depending on those university guidelines, always create that portfolio that is strongest for those works. Always start with the strongest works. Don't wait for showing extracurriculars or other skills when those universities that request for specific guidelines need to see those specific projects. So all, when you're looking for undergraduate, we know that you're coming fresh out of high school. We're not keeping the expectation too high, but any form of creative inputs or design representation is highly encouraged when it comes to design fields. For certain students who are looking for higher education, which would be your graduate studies, that is your master's degree programs here in the US, your portfolios have to be a little bit more different or more specific to the program of application. For instance, if you are applying for studying graphic design, your portfolio needs to include materials that will showcase that project under the umbrella of graphic design. You will also need to show or explain the processes from start to finish, which includes your sketches, your exp exploration stages, your execution stages, and so on. Graduate portfolios are also very research driven because this entire industry of design, technology, and business innovation is heavy on understanding or creating solutions for your users. So graduate students need to have that clear, driven definition of portfolio that shows their precise plan of a project from start to finish. So it has to be, let's re you know, go over the steps again for graduates. It has to be specific to your program of study. It has to showcase the entire process, whether it's research, whether it's the start of an exploration for your product to the execution stage. Now, graduate portfolios also, they have varieties from program to program. So when you are submitting for an example, motion media design portfolio, it has to showcase motion work. And if you are submitting for a field in fashion or jewelry or accessory, then your work has to display those effective softwares, those research and target audience understanding. Each portfolio is so unique to the student and, as, and there's never a, a standard rubric or a guideline structure that students need to you know, adhere to, but you have to show your best, foot, best work forward. 
So how do you pre present that in a professional manner? That's the challenge for a graduate student. Coming back to our more open generic portfolio presentation part for undergraduate students, for you, it is more easier to step into the programs of Bachelors of Design, Bachelors of Fine Arts, because at this moment, you're coming to learn softwares, you're coming to learn and explore different programs and different fields of creative studies. So at this point of time, your work need not be at the excellent stages of research and user-driven studies. But at this point of time for undergraduates, we're very interested and keen on knowing what are your creative skill sets. And like I said, going back to the first point, always research every university's guidelines because believe it or not, every university has specific rules or tips that they provide for portfolio submissions. So my mantra for portfolio submissions are always, it depends on the type of university, the type of program you're applying to. But that being said, for today, we're gonna talk about a few steps that will help you take your projects, you know, all your compiled projects and works to the next level of presentation or submission for college applications. And this is something here in my team and at SCAD, we always talk about the greatest of all time portfolio because that's what all our students are striving and thriving to produce. And it's not just for the college application, but also to prepare yourself for the industry levels. It is very important for you to have consistent work and you know, uh, consistent improvement in your portfolio. The first step that I love to talk about is all killer, no filler. And this is, you know, it sounds really vague. It sounds funny, but to be honest, this is one of my favorite and most important steps because you only have to show your very best work in your portfolio. I mean, it is important for universities to see quality over quantity. And I say this with experience, a lot of times our students think that it is important to show 20 different projects that may or may not be their strongest works, but they end up you know, putting more different explorations and genres of work. If you feel that a particular skill is not your strength, I may suggest you not to put those works because that may impact negatively on the reviewer's mind. And instead, when you put 10 or 15 stronger works in front of the reviewer, that builds a more positive impact on your creative interests and the works that you've, you know, really studied and honed for your por pro portfolio projects. So don't feel the need to always include everything that you've created. I personally know being a creative person, you may have 10,000 different projects, but that's the skill, that's the challenge you have for a portfolio submission is to figure out what are your strongest works, take feedbacks, take critiques from people, and then manage to create only those few best works for your portfolio submission. We do encourage students for the undergraduate program or curriculum to show us a range of skills or range of projects but that depends on your talent. So if your skills or talent is stronger in one aspect of sculpture and painting, put those works forward for your portfolio submission. And if you feel that you're not a very artistic person, but you're very creative in terms of writing samples, then please do suggest, I would suggest you to put those stronger works for the university submission. It is always difficult to find that balance between quality and diversity of work, but I'm sure that when you talk to your counselors, when you talk to university representatives, they will help you understand or build. Hello. 
Am I still on? Krishnam, now we can hear you. There was a small uh, so glitch in between. We couldn't hear you. I think no one could. Oh. So you can, uh, I think you can start from a little bit from where you stopped. Yeah. Could you tell me where, uh, what exactly was the it last? Was, it was on the, uh, I'm bad. The all first step? The, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me pull it up again. I apologize, everyone. I'm not sure what's going wrong for this, but we'll try and keep this more smooth. Okay, there we go. So to wrap up our conversation for step one, all killer, no filler, always talk about your best works, your range, your variations. If you have diverse talents, then put that forward. If not, then do not be afraid to put just one genre of skills for your portfolio. Have the ability to create something original for your designs and always choose quality over quantity. That being said, coming to our next step, which is to tell your story. And it is the hardest one that designers struggle with is to be creative in their own original form. There is no harm in taking references or inferences from other design works or other artists, but it is very important to tell your story in your designs. And by that, I mean, it, you know, telling your story means telling us your brand, what makes you and your art very unique. So we'll start with talking about your role and how do you structure your design in your specific manner. When we take a look at some of these student works, please know that they're just examples. It doesn't mean that you have to reach or attain the stages of their professional artworks. I just wanna show you examples of some good portfolio pieces from start to finish so that you understand, or if this may spark something in your imaginative project, then that's great. So when you see something that is from an idea to an exploration, which is concept stage to a final execution stage, it is very important to understand what's your role in that project. How have you come about thinking about this product? Was it, did you hear about the project or the company through online pages? Did you figure out that this was, you know, there was a need for a user in a different territory market and you figured out a new way to attain that or so solve that problem. So when we talk about roles, we talk about an individual project plus a group project. You can always talk about where that project was initiated and what was your role in understanding that particular problem or that issue. Even if you've collaborated on group pieces, you can always submit that for your portfolio presentations. I, I sometimes get the feeling that students believe portfolios should be a sole one army style of work, but that's not true because the industry doesn't work that way. And in the industry, as a graphic designer or, or as a product engineer or a user experience designer, you're working and collaborating with several departments to build a project or solve a solution. So when it comes to different group projects, you can always talk about your inputs or your participation in that project. Some people prefer to show the entire finished projects instead of just showing their roles. And that is completely acceptable for a lot of design universities because that shows the aspect of what was your contribution and what led to that final portfolio piece. So it is one of the very popular ones that students do end up submitting collaborative projects, but we do strongly recommend you to talk about your role in those collaborative group projects. Now processes, this is a particular topic which is very, I would say it differs from project to project. It's always great to show some examples of process works whether it is you know, your concept sketches to wireframes to final execution, that can help the reviewer understand how different the entire project has taken place from start to finish, then that's a good added advantage. Be very selective of showing your process works. 
all projects do not need processes. So you, if you find a specific project in your portfolio that has changed from the concept stage to the execution stage, in my opinion, I would highly recommend you to show those processes. When we also talk about process works, try and utilize your process works also to be its own very unique art form. A lot of times when we receive portfolios at SCAD, students do not pay attention to their process works and that puts negative you know, markings or an impression on the reviewer. So my strongest advice is take some time to also build a structure or lay out those process works to the best capacity you can so that if it is taken out of the project, then it stands alone as itself as a new portfolio piece or a design project of its own. And if you are taking screenshots, if you are scanning your sketches, basic, very common things that are, you know, never uh, taken into consideration is to make sure that the layouts for those processes are also good or the representation or design presentation is good. So please do take time to understand your projects, your processes, and show some examples for certain projects in your portfolio. Talking about brand, now this is something I was, you know, uh, mentioning earlier is a lot of our designers and artistic people take time to figure out their unique styles. And it's completely okay when your styles change year after year or even month after month, because in the real world, in the professional world, you will be working with several different clients. So your style has to cater to their needs or to their user markets. But when we request students to submit their portfolios, we want to see what's your passion project? What's your personal project? Is there a unique style that you've applied as a designer that is very different and sets you apart from other students or other artists? So especially for a, you know, a sample like this, and this is one of our graphic design students who's currently studying at SCAD, when she submitted her different portfolio pieces, I could see a rhythm and flow in her stylistic approach. And that's what makes her brand come alive because that's her unique style that was very clearly represented to us in over three projects. So when we see that the brand is not only your standalone pieces, but there is consistency and composition in all of the projects, that's an added advantage to portfolio presentations. These are another few examples that follow a common theme. And even if it is different you know, projects where one is an illustration, the other is a book cover, the third may be a packaging design style, if there is some consistency or some understanding of your stylistic approach, that's always a plus added advantage in the reviewer's mind. We also have some students who make sure that their brand is consistent through their portfolio. That's something I know it's a difficult challenge to achieve, but if you have those particular projects that correlate in terms of composition and consistency of you know, your style, then please do try and put them in your portfolio presentation. But going back to step one, always ensure that they are your best works. And don't worry about just showing quantity if that, had, you know, if your different projects are showing similar styles, but if you don't find them to be all good, then be selective and show only a few of those. The third step is all about the big picture. Now, as designers and personally me as well, I get very attached to my, my designs or my ideas or concepts. And it's very, very important at the undergraduate level or the master's level to take a step back and ask yourself, does this represent my work in the best way? So in order to do that, if you have a painting or if you have um, an illustration, what I would suggest is for you to take that big picture in mind by looking at your work through a macro view, which is basically looking at everything through a critical eye. That is something that we teach our students to be more professional ready anyway for the industry standards is to 
understand that your project, is it just your style of work or is it actually your style being used for an audience? So when we talk about design projects, when we talk about designers, we always have to make sure that, you know, there's an understanding of your illustration or painting for a reviewer as well. If it is something that is a painting that is solely understood or the theme is only solely understood by you, then I would suggest you to, you know, ask and take feedbacks from people to understand if this really connects with them as well. Because even when you walk through an art gallery or a museum, there's a designer who's showcasing different artworks of their own style, but you, you as a user connect with their work. So that's something we kind of encourage students to also try using as one of the steps in their portfolio compilation or presentation. It's very important to get a sense of how your portfolio will be received by other people before you push it out in the world. And that brings me to my fourth very important step is that opinions matter. It is very important. And this is a very you know, important step for every portfolio project submission at SCAD and other universities, where we encourage students to show their work to their mentors, to their art teachers, their counselors, their family, their friends, because everyone around you is a great resource to give you insights on how your portfolio looks to them. And who knows, perhaps they might remember a great project that you may have overlooked. So I would suggest when you have your 10 pieces or 12 pieces ready, show them to your mentors, gain some feedbacks, take risks on understanding what they, what they prefer versus what you prefer, and try and see what would be your strongest works. Like I said, as designers, we get attached to our designs. We get so connected to our styles and our work that we forget to connect, make sure that our designs are connecting with other people as well. So it's very important to get different perspectives so that could help elevate your work by taking risks, adding or subtracting a few pieces that you may not find to be your only personal strongest strength. The fifth point and the most overlooked point of portfolio representation is presentation. When you are putting your best works forward, always know that a good presentation matters. It is, it can change, it can make or break the decision for your admission or your job interview. Presentation is definitely, it's the greatest of all time because if I have to sell a rock, it depends on how I'm selling that rock. And if I can present that to my audience in a much better manner than just posting an image of the rock, then that's a game changer. So for example, with, you know, um, when you have multiple projects, whether it's in similar consistency of styles or if it is different in styles, you have to customize and choose which one works better, you know, after. My strongest advice is start with the strongest works. Okay, start with the biggest impression work that you have in your range of portfolio and also what others have told you that this seems to be a very strong potential portfolio piece. Start with those and then go on to the next steps of your portfolio pieces. But it is very important to cater to presentation, whether it is for just process works, whether it is for writing samples, whether it is for sculpture, whether it's for paintings, illustrations, digital work, very important to make sure that your entire screen or your, you know, your slides are being utilized to present that portfolio piece. And a few things to overview for presentations is when you upload for university or college applications, majority of those submissions are done digitally. So ensure that your pieces are high resolution, ensure that the orientations are correct, make sure that you can increase or decrease the contrast depending on what suits the project better. And it's always good to give descriptions or label your work so that when the reviewer sitting 10,000 miles away from you is going through your work, they understand the same theme and the concept that you initiated that project with. So 
a f you know, these may sound very minor, very simple and very basic to a lot of us, but more than times that I can count on my, you know, in my mind, people over overlook these basic thoughts and basic um, needs for presentation. We, when we also talk about the portfolio piece or applications for uh, design universities, plagiarism is an absolute no for admission purposes. So when we talk about plagiarism, I mean that all your portfolio pieces, all your ideas, your sketches, your concepts have to be your original work. If you've taken references from any other artist or design or company or brand, please be sure to credit them or to um, mention those names in your description so that there's due credit given to those artists and companies. What I would also say is more times than I can count, students end up submitting incomplete work with the scare that I have only five good pieces and I need to show 10. So if you have incomplete projects or if you have certain things that are not your strongest works, please talk to those university admission representatives, get their feedbacks and try and remove those incomplete works. Only focus your strength, only focus on the best works. You I would suggest you to refrain from using any cliches because you know, as the entire world is getting more and more connected, we do have an understanding of which designs and what phrases and what you know, um, wordings come with every piece. I genuinely wish for you to not use that fluff language and be just true to yourself so we understand who you are as a designer. And again, this may sound like a very basic, oh my God, I can't believe she's talking about it type of thing, but avoid, where, you know, when you're taking pictures, avoid showing lined papers or binder rings and ensure that the orientation of your work is proper. And when you have larger, you know, paintings or mural artworks or sculpture works, photography is of key value when you have to submit these, these particular things digitally. So ensure that you're also utilizing your time to represent or present those photographs very accurately. Avoid reflections, avoid shadows. And just because there's a sculpture work, it doesn't mean that you just take pictures of it from different angles. You can play with the environments, you can really create a story there or a theme there so that it shows that the student or the applicant has taken more efforts to put in that representation for sculpture. So utilize these few things and I guarantee you that one added step or that plus one attitude takes your presentation far more better than the other students. So these are a few things to keep in mind and be sure to avoid plagiarism at all costs. Now, another few things to remember to kind of wrap up all that we've talked about is to make your portfolio count with the best work only. Make sure that your themes or your ideas or your descriptions have clear communication. Think big, but take a step back and also think about whether it's connecting with your audience. Always request for feedback from your mentors and people around because like I said, we get so connected to our designs that we forget about it being implemented in the real world. So these feedbacks and these critiques will guarantee help you understand what are your strongest works. And at the end, when you have all your good feedbacks and everything put together in a well-presented manner, only put your best work forward so that it leaves a stark remarkable impression on all those admission reviewers. And with that being said, I will be sharing my contact information. So in case you have any questions about portfolio guidelines, or if you want to learn about how do I customize my project to make it better, or how do I elevate these five projects to make it more impressionable on a reviewer, please feel free to connect with us and we'll be happy to help you with those questions. With that being said, um, I do wanna open up the platform for Q&A just to be sure that what we talked about today or these steps that we discussed are maybe 10% helpful for your portfolio submission. 
Great. Thank you so much, Krishna. I think that was a wonderful session. I'm sure uh, everyone is much more clear about how they need to uh, present their portfolio to ensure that they get into the university of their choice. So thanks a lot for that. Of course, uh, we have a couple of questions uh, that have come in. Should I read it out for you and you'd like to answer in live? Sure, let's do that. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so Adya says, I'm a student of IDB, ID, BDP or one and I have visual arts higher level and thus I need to make a process portfolio. So will that be useful for my university admissions? Adya, I do feel yes, it will be helpful to show process portfolio styles because um, it is very different for IBDP visual art works to have an idea change from the concept stage to the execution stage. But my suggestion would be you don't have to show processes for all your projects. You can be selective in showing a few of them. Wonderful. Adya, I hope uh, that's uh, clear. If you have anything more, uh, you can, of course, put it in the Q&A box again. Uh, the next one is, uh, we don't have a name there, but I want to become an art director. How can I, after doing bachelor's in mass media communication? So I think he wants to become an art director and he's trying to ask, how can he do so after he completes his mass media communication? Whoever this is, I love the motivation and the, the challenge you've given yourself to reach that level of art direction. And it's possible through various platforms, not just mass media or communication. You can be a graphic designer. You can be a skilled interactive designer. You can be a motion media or a visual effects designer to reach an art director position. But what I will tell you is from my experience, when you reach a certain higher level of art director or uh, design director, what they need to see is how well have you attained your basic foundation skills? How are you utilizing those software skills and working towards a client to cater their needs and not just yours? So it's very important to be research driven, to understand your market, to understand your users from different areas, and then work with clients from there. So I know that you're in the right steps of coming, you know, and joining a creative design university. But just know that being an art director means that you can come in through any other field with those skills of research, concept, you know, user and everything. Interesting. Great. Thank you so much. The next one is from Nandini who says, what is the best way to express yourself through the presentation of our portfolios? So. That's the challenging question, Nandini, and it takes multiple iterations of portfolios to understand if this is really your true self or your best representation of your work. But what I would say is, Nandini, when you have 10 or 15 projects, show them to people and ask them if they find consistency or a very specific style in your projects. More than, you know, like I've always, I was a very shy person when I was initiating my design journey. And I was very afraid to ask for feedbacks and critiques. But over time, I realized that the more feedbacks I gain, the more I understand what is my stronger works and what shows consistency in themes or formats or concepts of work. So the best way to express yourself is to take feedbacks, to you know take a step back and look at your entire portfolio piece through a macro level use those critical feedbacks to your best use and make sure that there's some style that shows in your work. Wonderful. I think Nandini uh, is saying that she hesitates in taking feedback even though she wants to. So I think, uh, do you want to comment on that, uh, Kushnam? Absolutely. I relate to this, Nandini. And it took months and years of me to be comfortable in taking feedbacks. And I completely understand the hesitation, but I, I do have to tell you, please try it because it will only make you a better designer. Like in the real world, when we start working for different clients, I sometimes struggle with not using my, my stylistic approach for a particular client to fit in their brand. And taking feedbacks becomes very difficult for me in that manner because I feel like I'm not really... Course, you know, I'm not really portraying my best efforts for that project. 
But only when you take feedbacks, will you understand your client better? Will they be able to tell you what's working for them and what's not working for them? And you'll edit it accordingly. So there is no shame, no harm in asking for feedbacks. Just take that first step and you will get there for sure. And trust me, I, I do keep saying this over and over. It takes years for people to figure out their style or their, you know, their unique quality of adapting to clients' brands. Right. I think uh, this is a challenge that as a brand, we also face, you know, I think uh, when our designers give us something and, you know, we have something else in mind and I think they are doing their best, but then we are trying to portray, okay, I want this for my brand. And sometimes it takes so much time, uh, you know, for that person to really understand, okay, what the brand is really looking for. So uh, you said it uh, rightly, Kushnam, I think it's very important um to, you know to be open to feedback and you know try and understand what uh, the client really wants for the brand and accordingly do your best so true and if so, i may add just one thing the feeling that a designer gets when the client has no more edits or reviews is the best feeling in the world because that that means you've done your job well and that really happens only when you talk to your clients more often than you know, just sticking to one idea. Wonderful. Great. So uh, the next one is again, uh, we don't know the name here. I'm doing the IBCP program with SCAD. She's in mm -hmm. year one and she's done three courses so far. Draw 100, DG, DSG and 100 and Draw 101. Uh, she's oh. made many artworks in that time as projects. Uh, she wants to ask if you can, if she can include those artworks in her portfolio. Absolutely, yes. And these are, you know, just for other people also to understand the draw 100, design 100, and I believe you said draw 101. These are yes. foundational level classes that are taught in most design universities. They may be called in different terminologies or class names, but that's fine. This is basically to understand the basics of sketching and drawing and negative space and how do you implement perspectives in your drawings so these are very good foundational level um skill sets or attributes to show in your portfolio when you're applying for undergraduate degrees wonderful thank you so next one is again we don't know the name everyone wants to be anonymous here i guess <laughs> So uh, uh, they're asking, will the university that I'm applying for give any themes or topics for the portfolio? Um, to answer this, it depends on the university you're applying for. I'm sorry, I can't be more specific than this because what we request for guidelines in, at SCAD will be very different from another institution. So I may just suggest you to research that university's website, maybe talk to their admission representative to understand if they have certain themes or topics that are needed to be displayed in your portfolio. Wonderful. Um, Muskan is asking, how can I better understand what I need to include in an architecture portfolio? Are there resources to understand program specific preferences? Absolutely, Muskan. So um, I'm going to address this from an undergraduate degree perspective, but let me know if you're applying for a higher level, which is master's, because that's different. When students apply for undergraduate in architecture programs through most design universities, we are looking for some basic understanding of perspective designs, layouts, and, you know, like, that being said, there are some university, universities like SCAD including we, where we may not need you to show software skills because that's something we'll teach you when you come to SCAD. But just basic understanding of layouts or understanding structural design is always an added bonus. So if you are looking to only show a portfolio that is specific for architecture, you can try researching these particular tips and tools. And my always best suggestion to all students is always take inferences and references from what other students have been submitting online. Behance is a great platform to see what, what styles and types of projects um, other people are publishing. So see what, what skills can correlate to your project and then 
portray that in your portfolio pieces. But if you are applying for a higher level, which is master's degree, then Muskan, I will tell you that there are very specific requirements for architecture, because at that point, you're coming at a higher level of education. So they expect your foundation to be more set, more sorted in the field of architecture. And in that case, they'll need more better layouts. They'll, they'll need you to research the environment studies, they'll need you to learn about the codes that are required for every architectural design or style and also based on the country. So there are many, many more uh, guidelines required for masters. Wonderful, great. There are a lot of questions coming. So I think we're gonna run out of time, but we'll try and take as many as we can. Uh, so the, the next one is how to def differentiate between which projects need process display and which ones don't. That's that's the challenge, you know, like I know it sounds like I'm giving such vague answers and nothing very specific, but I will tell you, um, I forgot the student's name, but whoever it is, always try and take feedbacks and you know, when you ask your mentors, they will actually tell you that this particular project has changed drastically from the concept stage to the execution stage. So in those styles of projects, if you only show the final execution, your reviewer may not be able to understand how different or how many iterations of concepts you've gone through. So in those particular styles, I would suggest you to show the process work. If you feel that your idea for a product or an idea for an interior design has stayed consistent from the start, from the get-go, then you need not show process for those style of work. Wonderful. So the next one is from Yasubel. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I just wanted to ask, are there any suggestions you have regarding finding inspiration for or thinking of any potential project ideas? Oh, that's okay. So this is one of my favorite things to do on, on a daily basis is to go through Behance, go through Pinterest, see what styles of works are coming about. But if you really want to create a new idea, there are platforms and pages and, you know, uh, places where you can find new innovations. Like, especially, let me give you an example. I'm a big fan of learning design and tech and what's happening in the tech world. So for example, I'll try to see what type of AI or virtual reality tools and trip, you know, techniques are coming out. So I try to see if this particular project product can be utilized in the US or versus Asia. Is there a different target audience that can be created uh, differently for this product? And that's how you start picking out new ideas or think of potential ideas. But finding inspiration is, I mean, we're in the best generation and best time of uh, social media presence and exploration. So keep yourself active in all and every industry, not just to one style of illustration or painting. I would say keep your eyes and ears open for animation, for fashion, for film and TV, for anything that's around you because you never know how and when you may find an idea that co correlates two programs or two industries together. Great. So Ning Yu is asking, so this is an industrial design question. So he wants to study industrial design degree. What kind of design should I put in my art portfolio? Because industrial design contain a lot of different types of design. That's true, Ningyu. Um, what I may suggest is for you to start working on um, object drawings or start learning perspective, you know, three-dimensional, two-dimensional style of works and explore your, or rather I would say, make your base foundation stronger in those sketches. And then if you do have any software knowledge that is more related to 3D design or 3D form development, then that will be an added advantage for industrial design. But beyond that, um, beyond just sketches and softwares, I would also say research is a very key important part of industrial design because they're always trying to see if this particular product can be used by an audience or by a user. And it also differs from market to market. So if you have the time to research and figure out like, you know, where your designs are more suited and more catered to, that will be an added advantage in your portfolio. 
Wonderful. Uh, the next one is by Ria. Uh, she wants to get into fashion, but she has very little knowledge of fabrics or stitching. If any, what are the kind of skills should she be gaining before she starts college? Ria, that's that's how I was when I was at your age. Um, I was very confused and not very knowledgeable on the field of design. Um, I may suggest you to look at universities that offer foundational level years because when you come fresh out of high school, it is very normal to be confused as to which field or which particular style of fashion may suit you best because we may know of fashion designers and people who create garments, but you may be in the future, you may want to work in fashion marketing or luxury brands, who knows? So try looking for universities that have a more foundation year to help you give that exploration. And beyond that, in terms of fashion, it's all about coming up with new ideas, sustainable ideas. I mean, sustainability is the calling need of the hour. So I know that our fashion world, our accessory world and footwear world are all looking into such new styles of re-implementing fast fashion into sustainable fashion. Or if you want to learn the basics of stitching and, you know, uh, the the mark address formatting then i would suggest that there are many platforms on youtube or you know there are many platforms on uh, various learning courses i won't really name anything specific but there are ways to learn those basic skills and you can implement those in your portfolio wonderful great so I'm just trying and, uh, you know, looking at different uh, subject areas, like the next one is for interior, so we can cover as much as we can, right? So, so. Rema says uh, that uh, she's a freelance interior designer looking for a job. The masterclass was really helpful, but what is best color concept for portfolio as most of the portfolio is seen black and white rather than dark colors and which size is good for one page of portfolio? Which size is good? Yes. And which size is good for one? Uh, maybe, so Emma, if you can uh, explain okay. what do you mean, yeah. I'm a little, yeah, I'm a little lost in because this is a very specific guideline mm -hmm. uh, sort of rubric thing. But um, Rema, I think um, if you are, you know, like whether you're doing black and white or whether you're choosing color, that's that's a personal choice of portfolio piece. But um, I would suggest if you're applying for colleges, then go through their guideline pages and see if there are any specifications needed. Um, more times, design universities don't really confine on such you know, rubrics or uh, rics, you know, guidelines. They would always keep it more open-ended. Mm -hmm. So I think you should be okay with your style of work. Great. So next one is by Dhruv. Uh, he's interested in MFA inter interactive design and game development program. Right now, his main focus is 3D art. Will my portfolio only of 3D artwork be enough for this program or do I need to diversify it? Dhruv, if you're applying for an undergrad, oh, he said MFA, right? Yes. Masters. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. In that case, masters, there will be very specific guidelines that will be you know, listed on the university website. And 3D artwork is suggested for interactive design, but also if, you, if you're pushing more towards game art, then there will be more needs for study of environments and study of uh, 3D softwares that will be requested for portfolio display. So I think you should be okay with 3D artworks, but in order for you to show your range of understanding game development, uh, just go through the guidelines, see if you can, you know, tick at least nine out of 10 boxes from there. Wonderful, great. So um, I think there are a lot more and we are just running out of time. I think we have last four minutes left. So we'll try and cover as many as we can, but. In case if you're not able to, uh, you have Kushnam's details. Of course, we can even share it to you later after the masterclass and I'm sure you can reach out to her. Yeah. The next one is by Rufet. Uh, he's saying he's never done sketch for design work. Uh, I do all my sketches and layouts on the software itself. Basically, I don't have a design process for a project, so I won't be able to portray the process actually. 
does this mean there will be no value for that project and is this a disadvantage for me that's a very good question rufed um because i actually have a friend who works at marvel studios who cannot sketch to save his life honestly and that does not put his work down because he's very skilled in 3d technical styles of animation so my advice to your particular you know question would be if you're applying for undergraduate don't worry even a bit because at this point of time you will learn the foundational level classes the you will be building up skills and let me also be honest with you when when you're learning foundational skills it doesn't mean you have to ace them or be the best in all of them it's just for you to gain these skills knowledge and you figure out what exactly is your strength and focus a portfolio for that and in another scenario if you're applying for a master's degree program you can always structure your portfolio to show your technical skills or choose a program that requires those designated skills so if you have you know questions about this please feel free to reach out to me i can always connect you with somebody who's also from a very similar background or um you know a, a problem where they felt that their sketching skills were not to the best capacity but that's completely fine because they focused their work on different stronger work, uh, stronger skills great thank you krishna um we have an undergraduate student he is being an art and design student is an igcse we don't have a name so i don't know who it is we have to select topics for a coursework will the coursework be considered as a portfolio most times it is considered for a lot of universities but like i said my mantra is always research every university that you're applying for because some may accept some may not so i'm going to stand by giving another vague answer where it depends on the university you're applying wonderful i think we can take one more question and uh, i think the time is about uh, to get done so uh, another one i think let me just go through yeah so we have krishna who is asking i am i'm thinking of applying for majors in both product as well as graphic so i was wondering if if works from cad renderings as well as general art pieces also apply for my portfolio absolutely but um i would say that you know graphics is not just um art pieces it's a lot to do with layouts web website designs codings um certain coding languages there's a lot of typography learning there's a lot of uh branding and marketing of course so if you are trying to develop a portfolio that shows both product and graphic work you can utilize whichever is your strongest part and especially krishna if you're coming for undergraduate it's your time to show all your greatest strength so don't worry about which one is better show both of them if you feel they're really strong and good wonderful great thank you so much krishna i think uh, uh, there are a lot uh, more questions and i don't know maybe our students can reach out to you directly and ask those questions or uh, you know maybe uh, you know email you with those questions but uh, thank you very much i think it has been a really really nice session uh, and thank you for answering all those questions i'm sure it, it was really helpful for the students maybe uh, uh, this session is recorded so we will be sending the recording to all of you guys so yes, if you have missed something or join later you can access it and uh, we'll be also sending um, if kushan if you're okay can we share the or email or someone else's email Absolutely. or yeah yeah uh, so uh, we'll share those details as well so you can reach out to her and mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for joining i hope uh, you had a wonderful time and kushnam thank you so much for your time absolutely i really did enjoy this i hope that you know these basic steps that we discussed will be helpful for everyone like i said in the beginning it's not my job to tell you what's a good design or bad design but we're here only to encourage you to understand how you can better elevate your work and um, you know feel free to reach out to me i have a wonderfully large team of advisors if not me then somebody else will connect with you and i'm happy to connect with you know connect you with people who have similar thoughts or experiences as yours so 
we're there to support you as much as we can. And thank you so much, Mitali, for being so patient with all my technical glitches. But um, I hope that we can do more of these sessions for other students. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kushnam. Thank you, guys. I hope everyone has a good evening and good day to you, Kushnam. Thank you so much. Take care. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.